Hey guys, uh, I'm actually out on Pickwick practicing, but uh, hasn't been going very good. Driving around a lot. I think I've caught one bass. So, um, just want to do a quick rundown of the tackle I used on Chickamauga a couple weeks ago. So, I didn't use a lot of different stuff. Really, only four rods, and the bulk of the work was done with two of them. So, um, I'll just kind of run through this, the baits I was using, the setups I was using, so you kind of have a little bit of an idea. Uh, the first one, and pro probably the biggest player, was the Kriji Lock and Load jig, half ounce. Uh, I think he's called. I think we call it a watermelon candy color. It's kind of a pumpkin watermelon red. Um, you know, just a real natural looking jig. And I had, if you look, this is actually one of the exact jigs I used. In the back of it I have a little piece of a big bite trick stick that I threaded on. You know on this jig we have a screw lock which I, I really like for holding plastics on um, but I was actually using an old school Uncle Josh pork rind for a trailer so when you do that you always want to put a piece of stick bait or just something on there. Um, you know if you don't have a screw lock you can glue it on which I just I don't like super glue that's on my jigs um, that's why I had the screw lock put on but what that does is first off with the with, with there being a screw lock on there it'll keep the the skirt material from getting caught up in that screw lock and then the second thing it does is when you hang your chunk on there you know where you're just sticking it right through you're not threading it on um, whether it's pork or a regular piece of a, you know a plastic chunk what'll happen sometimes if you're skipping it or just you know casting it that pork will kind of or the chunk will kind of want to get hung up or slide down too far um, and it'll just it messes it up so you just put that little piece on there just to keep it from sliding down um, so yeah half ounce um, watermelon candy I think is what we're calling the color uh, and what I had that on was a, a St. Croix Victory 7-4 heavy power fast action and I, th I throw this rod a lot for flipping it's it's I also throw the uh, the same rod but in a, a legend extreme and the, the the big difference is you know both great rods both super sensitive but when you go with a victory it's it's more stout it has more backbone more power so I was flipping with 25 pound sunline shooter fluorocarbon so I wanted, you know, I wanted a fairly stout rod. You know, if I was using braid, I would, you know, then I don't use this rod. I use a, a couple other different ones. I'll mention, you know, talk about some other time. But uh, I really like this rod for flipping with fluorocarbon. So 7.4 heavy, victory, high speed reel. I was using an 8.1. I always used to kind of stick with the seven gear ratio, but flipping, I, I really like that that faster gear ratio where just to pick up line quicker between casts and then if you get a fish that runs right at you I really like to have that uh, that faster gear ratio so that was the one key player that's what I caught the the 10 pound 5 ounce on three or more my four fish the first day came on on the the lock and load so the other one that I caught my fourth fish on the first day was just a, one of my favorite things to throw, Mega Bass Mag Draft 6 inch. Um, I caught one fish on it, uh, one keeper on it the first day, a couple shorts. Um, this was a big part of my game plan, honestly. You know, if you watch the recap video, I kind of had this in my back pocket, I thought, and I was only able to run that pattern the first day, caught one keeper. Uh, it was, you know, where I was fishing, it was just a long ways away from my other main area, so. Um, the other two days, I just, I didn't, I couldn't, I didn't make the decision to make the 30 mile run. But either way, this one I was just, you know, fishing on a couple like channel swing banks. I had one isolated stump, just a couple pot, you know, banks leading back into spawning pockets. Caught some good ones in practice. Um, throwing that on 20 pound sunline shooter, 7 3 gear ratio reel. And then the rod is a, it's a 7.6 6 
medium heavy power moderate fast action and you hear me talk about this rod a lot i use it for a lot of different things spinner baits um, swim baits whether it's a harness style like this or just uh you know one on a jig head one of my favorite rods i also flip with it with braided line because it's a little more parabolic um, and it's perfect for this mag draft i like something that's a little more moderate you know, not full on moderate like a crankbait rod, but I like something that's a little more parabolic for for uh, these swim baits. I just think they get it a little bit better and I just feel real confident when I'm fighting them. Like I can lean on them a little harder. Um, you know, when you get something that's just a straight fast or an extra fast, sometimes you can kind of overpower that bait and, and rip the hook out. So that's just my personal preference. But so the mag draft weighed one fish on it. I was thinking it was going to be more of a key player, but it wasn't. Uh, it was for other people, but just not for me, just that one fish. The other bait that I threw a quite a bit, and I caught several keepers on it. I think only a couple that I weighed was just a, a you know, half ounce Z-Man jackhammer. I was throwing white. I had just a, uh, you know, shad style trailer on it. Um, you know, it's not... It's a, it's a Z-Man Razor Shad. I throw the Big Bite Kamikaze Swim on a lot too, but with it, this one, I like it. It's a little more buoyant. I was fishing it fairly shallow, so I thought it gave the bait a little more lift. That's why I was throwing the Razor Shad. And I do like it. It's a great trailer. I throw it often, but that, you know, the Kamikaze Swim on's really good too. But uh, that, I was throwing on a, it's actually one of the prototypes I got from last year. It's a St. Croix Legend Tournament, and it is a 7-2 heavy power but it's a moderate action so it's real parabolic uh, really similar to the you know they make the legend glass and the mojo glass in the same length power and action but with with this rod it's it to me it's it's physically lighter weight and I like the handle on it it's 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 thinner it's a little smaller diameter I've got smaller hands so it just seems to I don't know fit in my hand really well really comfortable so that's the rod I was using. I was using a seven three to one gear ratio reel. And I know a lot of people throw a, a six four gear ratio, but I find that in shallower water, I want it a little faster just to keep the bait up. When I rip it out of the grass, I, I want it, you know, I want to have a little faster gear ratio if a fish hits when I rip it out of the grass, which is often when they do hit. And I was throwing it with 18 pound uh, Sunline Shooter. So that was kind of the, that was, I caught several fish on the chatterbait, uh, several keepers. I just, I don't think I caught, in the tournament I didn't catch any big ones on it. I, I think I might have weighed a couple, but uh, not a lot. But I did catch several keepers on it. And then the last one, which caught the majority of my keepers, uh, on day two and three I think I caught all but one fish that I weighed on just a Texas rig creature bait, which this is a fighting frog. This is just what I happen to have on the rod. That's not what I was throwing. You know, I told you that in the recap video. I was throwing a just a beaver style bait, which I typically will throw this, especially, you know, in the spring around the spawn. But for me, it was, I had a lot of confidence in a certain color and I just didn't, they don't make it in this fighting frog. So I, I, and it might've been just in my head. I probably could have caught him on a fighting frog. I know, you know, several other people did. A um, couple, couple people that were, uh, that finished pretty high were throwing it, but just had it on a four out straight shank, uh, owner jungle flipping hook, five sixteenths ounce, Motley fishing, um, tungsten bolt sinker, pegged with a, with a bobber stop. And then I had it on actually the same rod I was throwing that jig on, the Victory uh, 7.4 heavy power fast action uh, St. Croix Victory. So 25 pound sunline shooter, high, high gear ratio reel. Uh, like I said before, I really like flipping with this rod with fluorocarbon. Uh, whether it's a jig or plastics. Uh, I've had, had a lot of success with it. Really like the Victory series, especially for the money. You know, in that $200 range, is really tough to beat. So, you know, with the, the creature bait and that jig, you know, the bulk of the fish I caught was just, you know, flipping laydowns, fishing kind of rocky banks with wood on them, 
that was where the bulk of my fish came from. Uh, I caught several keepers, you know, on the creature bait in the last two days. So um, that's kind of the rundown. Like I said, nothing special. Just, uh, I just want to try to do this after every tournament, just do more of a basic rundown of the tackle instead of a half hour recap video that I typically put out. So uh, that's kind of it. Uh, I ended up in 18th place, so a decent finish, moved up to 20th in AOI, you know, it was a good tournament, and it was fun, you know, I caught some, well, one really big fish, some other nice fish, so, um, hopefully you guys are enjoying what I'm putting out here, I'm trying to do more content, uh, my wife figured out why there wasn't comments on any of my videos, I had it set up wrong, of course, so, now you guys, if you, if you want to start leaving comments or, you know, qu ask questions, uh, feel free to do so. I'm actually, I'm going to start doing another little series. Uh, I don't know how it'll go over, but I'm going to call it Deep Thoughts, where just stuff that I randomly think of, you know, when I'm out fishing or traveling. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to try to do more of that stuff. I, I really like putting stuff on YouTube. It's just sometimes hard for me to do it, and obviously the quality's not, you know, it's either off my phone or GoPro, so it's nothing super special. But uh, thanks for following along. Leave a comment. Uh, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, I really appreciate it and uh, I'll keep putting stuff out for you guys.